In a world dominated by technology, some may find it hard to look past the screen we see or the car we're driving. But how is it that the phones in your pocket or Elon Musk's Teslas can incorporate so much technology in such a small space? The answer? Copper wiring, an electrical conductor used in homes, offices, factories, laboratories, and industrial facilities, with one of the largest industry applications being in wind farms, as a single 660 kilowatt wind turbine alone uses 800 pounds of copper, and the setup of the transformers for the turbines uses 2,000 pounds of copper wiring. But why is copper the metal of choice for so many wiring applications? Copper wire has high electrical conductivity, making it useful in transformers and switch gears. It's very ductile and malleable, allowing it to be stretched easily for electrical components without breaking, and it is corrosion and creep resistant, allowing it to withstand environmental effects as well as reject deformation over long periods of time. Prices for copper wire vary depending on where you are, but in Home Depot, if you browse the aisles, you can find yourself 100 feet or 4 pounds of 24 gauge copper hobby wire for $7.99. In general, the smaller gauge number of the copper wire, the larger the cross-sectional area, and the more expensive the wire gets. From data recorded between 2020 and 2021, the COMEX copper price was projected to be $4.20 per pound in 2021 with an increase of 50% from the previous year. In terms of production in March of 2023, 3,400 tons of copper were exported from the U.S. alone, equating to 44 million U.S. dollars in sales, with Arizona being the leading copper-producing state, averaging 71% of all domestic output, electronic output in phone and cars, and renewable energy production in wind farms. Global supply is expected to jump 26% by 2035, equaling 308.5 million tons of copper, which would still be a 1.7 short of global demand. With the top manufacturer of copper wire being the International Wire Group, and the largest copper mining company is Codelco, which lands state-owned company producing 1.73 million tons of copper in 2021. Around the globe, Copper is most commonly found as ore in Chile, China, Australia, and the United States. From these mines, the copper must go to refineries, either locally or internationally. For Cadelco, they are able to secure such a huge amount of copper to refine from their mines in the metal-rich Chile, yet Chile still has enough copper to export. Along with Chile, countries like China, the United States, Japan, and Russia refine great quantities. Due to the subduction zones of the Earth's crust, copper is found often around the edges of the Pacific Ocean, continental margins, and many islands, as periphery copper originates as igneous or previously melted and cooled rock. Rock copper ore is often available as sediment-hosted copper accounting for approximately 20% of the world's copper resources. However, copper is most commonly found as porphyry copper, being used as approximately 65% of the global production, where in the United States, it accounts for approximately 95%. The porphyry copper is mined in massive open pit mines that can often cause huge environmental damage from both the sheer scale of moving the land and industrial runoff. Once mined, the copper gets sent to refineries that turn the ore into metal. For use as wiring, the metal is drawn out thin and rolled onto spools categorized by gauge. Depending on the application, the wire receives a layer of insulation extruded over it and rewound into a spool. Since drawn out copper can grow to be miles long, quality control checks need frequent monitoring of the product via visual, dimensional, conductive, tensile strength, insulation, resistance, and flammability tests. After being manufactured and used, copper can be easily recycled into new products, but at a cost. Not only is not all copper used being recycled, but it is also costly to do so. Though recycling has gotten better over the years with environmental awareness, this leaves more reliance on the production of the raw material to make new products. 
The issue with this is that copper mines are trending towards larger and larger disparities between the production and the demand of the material, requiring us to dip into copper reserves. Already in 2022, at only 22 million metric tons produced, production fell short of the demand. By 2036, it is expected that the demand for copper will be approximately 36 million metric tons, with only 30 million metric tons being produced. With so many applications for copper, the material set aside for copper wiring is bound to be harder to come by. Copper resources that can be mined are estimated to be 5 billion metric tons and current global copper reserves hold 870 million tons. During the last decade, more than 30% of global copper demand was met with recycled copper. Future innovative policies and technologies should continue to contribute to resource efficiency in mining primary copper and recycling secondary copper. Since 1950, there has always been, on average, 40 years of copper reserves and over 200 years of resources left. While we have a considerable amount of time before copper becomes a scarce resource, the ever-increasing demand will cause a supply chain shortage if there is not something done to assuage the situation. This shortage will cause price hikes and longer lead times in the electrical and electronics industries, not to mention difficulty in procuring materials necessary for brushes, lightning rods, and spy glasses. This will not only affect the companies in these industries, but will also impact the common consumer as our devices become more expensive. In terms of alternatives to copper, aluminum would be a good material to replace it with. Being cheaper and lighter weight than copper, it could be easily replaced monetarily. Problems arise in terms of conductivity, as aluminum is only 60% as conductive as copper making it interchangeable in low voltage scenarios, however less logical when we enter high voltage situations. Due to aluminum's low current carrying capacity, it would require cross sections of about 50% larger than that of what copper would, essentially meaning that aluminum requires more space to carry the same amperage as copper. In terms of depletion, according to Canadian geologist David Brooks, it is estimated that the average square mile of Earth's crust contains a billion tons of aluminum which is generated from a sedimentary rock called bauxite, making depletion of aluminum highly improbable. 